uh, Saturday with the team and got a chance to clean up a lot of different things. Um, you know, we had some issues in all three areas. Obviously, the you know we we felt we didn't play you know close to where we were capable of playing um, from whatever reasons that may be. From some of it was mistakes, some of it was uh, just a lack of execution. But um, you know, the things that concerned us, obviously, the punt return uh, in the first half. Uh, we got to work on having better coverage. You know, with that returner, we knew that he was a very dynamic guy that had a lot of speed, and and uh, you know we let that get out because we didn't quite fan the field with our with our coverage. We need to be better there. Um, obviously, the you know the, there was a tell of two halves that we talked about at the end of the in the press conference after the game about how well the really both sides of the ball played in the first half of the seat of, of the game. We're statistically, we're controlling the ball and clock and being very proficient. The only thing offensively that we struggled with was scoring touchdowns. And we got to be better when we get down in those, in the red zone area about scoring touchdowns instead of field goals. You know, defensively, we did a really good job. You know, we were, you know, we had some three and outs that first half. We had, um, you know, some control with really stopping the run and, and they weren't really doing much in the passing game. As a matter of fact, overall passing game wise, it, they didn't pass for a lot of yards, but they made great second half adjustments when their run game, particularly with the quarterback runs that, you know, that really caught us. And, you know, so those are things that we had needed to shore up. But so the things that, you know, we, we saw and was evident in the game with the team was, you know, we could have played a lot better. You know, we made some mistakes. Uh, there were some coaching mistakes too. Uh, we all felt, you know, there was a level of investment with everyone uh, about that. Uh, we're, we've all took ownership in that, and you know, we're ready to move forward. The guys were frustrated, when it, I think, in a good way at the end of the game, which because they they felt that they didn't play to their capabilities, and they, you know, so I, I think that's a good sign of, you know, that's a, that's a good frustration about cleaning things up and getting back to playing the the style of football and the stuff that we've been working on. Uh, for the several months, you know, we feel that we're that's the type of team we are, and we just didn't do that as well. So we got to come out, you know, obviously playing against Air Force this week. They had a very impressive win. Uh, probably weren't really challenged that much, uh, you know, in terms of you know, uh, you know what the opponent was was able to do against them. But uh, they they looked really good, very efficient offensively, uh, defensively. They kept them at bay. Uh, they did a good job of creating turnovers. Um, so I, I think, uh, you know, it's going to be really important for us to shore up our issues uh, and continue to work on some game planning aspects of how to, con you know, obviously stop a very, uh, I would say, the probably the top rushing offense in the country right now. So, you know, it's going to be a great challenge for us, but I think our guys are excited about it, uh, given uh, what how we played last week. And um, we feel that we're going to get ourselves back on track, you know, with with a good week of practice. and and hopefully showing that improvement on Saturday. Hi, Coach. What is your plan with the quarterback position this week? We do have a plan we talked about and worked through. Um, we will not discuss that plan today with you guys, but we do have a plan moving forward. Uh, we, we know that both of those guys still need a lot of work. They both had issues in the game, uh, but we do have a plan in place. Thank you for asking. I talked to Calhoun a couple weeks ago at the – Media huddle. He said he had 29 seniors leaving the program. Have you seen those deficiencies? Have you, when you've been watching film, and overall, you said they have a good rushing, pass rush, and um, what are you just seeing from them? I'm seeing a really good football team. You know, I, I, uh, like I, I, I felt like they, they, they operated very, very efficiently uh, on both sides of the ball. You know, I felt. Um, you know, I think Northern Iowa had, had struggles. You know, particularly generating enough rhythm offensively and uh, you know they had a an opportunity you know when we studied the tape in, in the second quarter they had a great drive and they were driving down in the red zone and a quarterback makes a great scramble he gets inside the you know the 10 yard line and he gets stripped you know so really you know that's a turnover that was a critical turnover that they could have used to help fortify their position but unfortunately that didn't happen so they played well you know and you know, we know we're going to need to play really well. You know, we're going to we're going to have to make some big strides of of meeting 
uh, the needs and, and concerns that we have about fixing our schemes and, and, and we just the good thing about this last week's game is that we didn't have we didn't lose anybody from an injury standpoint everybody came out with just bumps and bruises but we need to kind of get our, our football sharpened up and we'll work on doing that this week Carl after the game the other night a couple of your leaders uh, you know kind of came up and, and talked about they they noticed kind of a, a deflated attitude hitting the sideline in the second half when, when the game was still very much a contest. Uh, you know, schemes aside, is this an issue maybe you and your staff have, have to address this week going forward? No, not really. I thought that was kind of over-dramatized. You know, I talked with those guys. Uh, they came in and saw me yesterday because they saw the some of the things that were said. And they, there was, I, I, th I felt that they felt that it was out of context. But... Um, but that's frustrations. You know, I wanted them to be frustrated. We did not play well in the second half to get a chance to win that game. And the frustration is that we expect to be better. Um, but we, we have to perform. You know, we have to perform. And, and we're going to work on doing those things to the best of our ability going into this week. And they understand that, you know, we only have 11 opportunities left. And we've got to take advantage of every one going forward. And... But the frustration and, the, you know, because they know that they weren't meeting this, the standards of what we, we expected ourselves to play. And, you know, some guys were making a, a few mistakes that normally they wouldn't make. And, and that's, you know, for some reason, why did that happen? Those are the things we got to kind of shore up and make sure we're clear with, with our communication. We're clear with game planning and making sure everybody understands, you know, their roles and expectations, you know, all 11 on, on, on any phase that we're doing. So I think that's kind of the heightened awareness and urgency that we have right now is a really let's put our guys in position to do the things we're capable of becoming and not necessarily putting guys in just because it's a great idea to do, but we don't know if that guy's capable of, of doing that, that particular job. So we have to really scrutinize that as coaches, putting our guys in a better position to be successful. When it comes to defending the triple option, how do you, what do you think is the best approach to doing that? Is it just a matter of guys being gap sound, or is there anything special that you it, think? There's a lot of special. You know, it is it is gap sound. It is assignment sound. It is, you know, understanding reading your keys uh, and adjustment with what you're seeing and, you know, your visual keys. So, you know, it's going to take a great level of, of, you know, concentration and discipline to stay in that mindset for 60 minutes because that's this team is going to challenge you to do that. How challenging is this week for your scout team? Do you have to pull a skill player to, to run scout team quarterback? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, they, they have, um, you know, athletic quarterbacks. As a matter of fact, guys that have some experience, all three of them, um, you know, they've had playing experience. So, you know, we're going to try to, sh you know, put together as good a scout team as we can to, to emulate the, the best looks that we can for our defense. Does the amount of guys that Air Force use on offense, whether the amount of guys that touch the ball, does that present an extra challenge this week in just kind of trying to prepare, uh, the defensively just trying to prepare for what they're going to throw at you? The Air Force is really good at in-game adjustments. You know, they, they, they do a tremendous job, probably as good as anybody in the country, about what a team does against them and what's the answer to or the solution to it. So... Um, it's going to be a chess match in terms for what we can provide. We can't line up in the same front every time because they'll, they'll eventually, you know, get to, to some answers for that. So we have to, you know, we have to play the game. You know, we're going to have to show them certain things and, and we're going to have to play, uh, you know, and understand the, the, the question that this gentleman had about being disciplined and things. So how many things we can do and, and, and how many guys, how many guys that can, digest all that information and go through their not only their assignment their read keys their you know all the different things so you you have to understand that that's a that's going to be the challenge for us defensively for sure I think we can hold up against it but I think it has to be very regimented about how we our approach is this week Carl you and uh Troy Calhoun worked together I think it was just one year with the Broncos um wondering uh, what do you remember about working with him? Uh, and, you know, I know it's been a while, but it was just one season. But yeah, what's your recollections? Well, unfortunately, I haven't worked with him, but I know Troy. Uh, Troy came. I came to the Broncos, and Troy left, and went to to Air Force. 
So, but I've known him for a while, um, just in passing. I was an intern uh, when I was here at CU as the offensive coordinator. Actually, excuse me, I was at the offensive coordinator at Washington when, um, when Troy was there uh, as, as a, the assistant there at that time. So, but by the time I got hired at Denver, he was already, he was already at Air Force. But outstanding coach, very smart. Um, you know, obviously he's, you know, he's in a great, he's running a great program. He's, he's, uh, he's done uh, fabulous things there for a long period of time. So his body of work is, is you know, is, is pretty strong. So a lot of respect for what he's done. And, you know, he runs a great program. So this is obviously a huge challenge for us. Obviously, we, after the game, we talked a lot about the second half kind of disparity in rushing yards for TCU. After kind of reviewing the film, what did you see, um, mainly from your defense perspective, that kind of allowed that to happen? And how do you kind of make those adjustments going forward? Because obviously, it's a heavy rushing attack, but it's a very different style uh, this week as mm -hmm. compared to last week. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to do some adjustments. Uh, and our adjustments are going to have to be a lot more effective than where they were last week. And, you know, it's um, you know it's 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 going to be a challenge. You know, as as we know that every team is challenged by this offense. You know, any team in the country that plays against a, a Navy or Army or or Air Force is they, they all know how challenging it is to defend these offenses. So uh, we're going to have a good plan. Um, we're going to execute that plan the best we can. We're going to put our guys in the best positions that they can be in, for, uh, given their skill sets and and. Uh, and, and really go forward with a with a great plan of attack this this you know this Saturday. So um, nothing really to diver, diverge from last week's game to this week's game because it's kind of different. If that makes any sense to you? It may, it's a different. It's the spread offense to now. It's a everything's packed in. So it's, there's there's no um, there's no similarities from the different styles. So that's our preparation this week is is going to be a lot more different. Um, than it was, you know, particularly going against uh, TCU. Carl, late in the third quarter when you uh, decided to punt um, at the 40-yard line, uh, can that send the wrong message to your team that uh, you don't believe in the offense to go down there and score? No, I didn't think so. It was my decision at the time. It wasn't, it's not going to bold anything differently with, with that, what we're doing moving forward. Is there anything you and your staff can learn about maybe rewatching the 2019 Air Force game? Obviously, I know you, know you we have here, but I mean, <laughs> if you have watched it, what? If you, uh, yeah, what we're you watching know? everything. You know, teams that have had, um, you know, for the last two or three years that have had success against them. So, um, but you got to give Air Force credit too. I mean, even in this first game, they were doing a few things differently than they've done in the past. So they've evolved too. Um, they're evolving and getting better, you know. When particularly when you have a quarterback is that has the more experience he gets, you get you know he gets more tools in the toolbox, right? So they're they're evolving too. So it's, we just have to be really good at recognizing what we see and, and staying locked in on our assignments and 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 then coming downhill. I mean that's what's going to be important this week is coming downhill. Carl, you mentioned you and Troy both worked for Mike Shanahan. When you watch his offense, is there a lot of similarities in, in what you guys are trying to do? And do you see things like, yeah, I, I know what he's doing there because we did that in, in Denver as well? Well, particularly in the passing game. You know, he, he's fitted into his system at Air Force, you know, and it's different than what it is in a pro-style offense. But you see some of the passing concepts are very similar to what, you know, all of us have done in our, in our past. And uh, what makes this so challenging for – for any team to defend is everybody's geared about stopping the run and then all of a sudden there's guys wide open down the field. So that's the challenge of playing with discipline, you know, understanding what your read keys are, understanding when you should be in coverage when you versus being in filling a gap or, you know, in a perimeter for a run game play. So that's the challenge is that they do a tremendous job of great balance with actioning everything off of their run game and all of a sudden it could be a pass. So. We, uh, we have to execute that and show the, 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 the looks as best we can uh, to give our defense a chance to, to, to do an effective job this, this weekend.
I think R.J. Sneed played about nine snaps. Was he able to get through that without any setbacks? And do you anticipate yeah. his workload kind of ramping up? Yeah, he ended up with a couple catches too, and you know it was good to get him a couple touches. And you know we we wanted to kind of give him, a, you know, coming back off of that injury, we wanted to kind of gradually put him back into more playing time as we go, but no setbacks, like you said. And so we expect more out of him this week. So we're going to continue to ramp him up as we go. I think one of the highlights coming out of Friday was um, Daniel Aris's birthday and also his performance. What do you see from him on that game, and how are you going to utilize him coming to Saturday? We're going to keep utilizing Daniel. He's uh, he's uh, you know he's a, he's he's a guy too that has worked really hard in this off season. Is really taking uh, you know the coaching that the coach McGagan has given him, and he's really just. Uh, focused in on really improving his game, and and I'm really proud of him. Really, really proud of him because, you know, we we probably didn't utilize him as well as we should have. You know, and, and since I've been here, since I've known Daniel, he's a tremendous talent. He's got great speed. He's got great size and strength. Uh, his confidence, you can tell, is 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 tremendous. You know, now when you watch him play. Um, so he's he's worked really hard to do the things he's doing right now. So I'm very proud of what he's the start of the season for him, for sure. Going along the lines with the discipline aspect you talked about, how much are you guys stressing with the def with your defensive players' patience this week? Just because of how methodical Air Force likes to be and how long and sustained those drives can be, how much is that going to be an important aspect of practice and just kind of focus or you know emphasizing patience as? For defense to try not to get over. And, and that's, a, that's a great question. Our patience has to be is go, taking the one play and executing the play and then going back to, to the next one is really eliminating what you just saw and focusing back on your keys and your reads and your assignments on the next. So those are the, that's the discipline aspect of really just staying in the game, staying locked in on doing your job, um, you know, play after play after play. You know, that's going to be the biggest challenge for our defense. Anything else for Coach? All right. All right, Thank thanks, you. Coach.